Hi, it's DeWire. It's July 8th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I get to Luke Campbell against Ryan Garcia, let me just briefly uh, talk about a fight that was on TV last night. Well, a fighter, Jose Zepeda. Right now, Zepeda looked magnificent. He is slick. He knows how to hide his upper body. His timing is perfect. Uh, he can throw combinations from long range. But what I want people to understand is recently, recently, his last few fights, Zepeda has fought a guy who could be the gold standard at 140 pounds. This is a neglected name in the sport that you need to know. Jose Ramirez. Folks, not only is Ramirez unbeaten, He's unified at 140, right? I didn't say undisputed. He's unified at 140. He's working on it. You might recall him as the guy who KO'd Maurice Hooker. Well, understand, Jose Zepeda fought him. Fight went the distance. Zepeda lost by majority decision, right? Majority decision. Goes the distance against an unbeaten, right? Loses by majority decision. In other words, it's close on the scorecards. So, of course, he follows that up by fighting the sniper, Pedraza. Pedraza just beat Slick Mick, Les Pierre. Right, that Pedraza. Right, Pedraza who had his moments against Lomachenko. And, of course, Zapata beat him. Right, Jose Zepeda is an elite fighter. He's an elite fighter. Um, understand, I know we know the names at 135. Right, Lomachenko, Gravante Davis, Teofimo Lopez. We know the names at 135. We know the names at 147. Right, Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence, Sean Porter, Terrence Crawford. Right? There's a division between the two. And it has a lot of talent. Right? Now, I have to pub California fighters. I'm in California. I think some of the best fighters in the world are in California. And when I see a champion like Jose Ramirez not getting mentioned, <laughs> seemingly ignored, a guy who I believe was on the Olympic team, Who's still unbeaten? Who's beating guys like Jose Zepeda? You know he's doing work when you see Zepeda on TV and you're like, who's this guy? And then you realize Ramirez already beat him. Then I've got to mention it here. Right? Let me also say, too, when you see a group of fighters who've been overlooked, like the guys at 140, right? Zepeda, Ramirez, just to understand, uh, Pedraza, who I know after he lost to Zepeda, people were wondering what was going on. He's still skilled, folks. When you see guys like this who are being overlooked, make a note of it. Because when they fight more known fighters, you'll know that you're getting value taking these guys. Well, let's uh, switch the gears. Zepeda, magnificent. Let me just quickly say about Jose Ramirez. One of the best tight left hooks in boxing, right? One of the best tight left hooks in boxing. He's a tall guy who can fight backing up, but who likes to throw punches with you, who likes to mix it up with you, doesn't hide behind a jab, has a very straight right hand, right? He's a fighter you need to know. When you see two, a Jose Pedraza look great against Slick Mick, right? Knock Slick Mick down in the fight. You need to look at his resume and say, wow, Zepeda beat him recently. 
Maybe this Cepeda guy is heavy. Right? As fighters go on to bigger and better things in their career, revisit their earlier fights. That Ramirez Zapata fight was a classic. Understand, while these guys may not be household names, these are excellent fighters. Right? 140 is a division to be reckoned with. Well, let's talk about Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. I've criticize Garcia here online for him dissing Oscar De La Hoya, his promoter for a very long time, right? I understand people get carried away on Twitter and people have Twitter personas and stuff like that. Ryan Garcia needs to understand that at 21 years old, the fact that he's ranked the fact that he's in the public conversation, the fact that I'm talking about him here online should be viewed as a pat on the back to his promoter, Golden Boy. Right? They're obviously doing the job, getting him into the public conversation. Now, while I don't like Garcia's lack of gratitude, I do think he beats Luke Campbell because of his talent. Folks, I know he hasn't fought Lomachenko like Campbell did. Right? That's, that's understood. But let me just say, hand speed is something that really can't be taught. The guys with blinding hand speed show up to the gym with blinding hand speed. Now, Ryan Garcia is a power puncher. As you look at the highlights, you'll see him blowing out guys. He has a lot of power. My point to you is he has a lot of hand speed as well. In my favorites folder, I have Ryan Garcia highlights. Don't focus on the power. Don't focus on the guys falling down in front of him. Just focus on the hand speed and focus on his ability to jump back. He can use his feet for defense, right? While I prefer guys who can block your shot and then come back, Lomachenko, when he's in the pocket, right? I'll just say this, to overcome Garcia's height reflexes, right? Hardly anything in the world like young reflexes. His accuracy, his power, and his ability to simply move back. Understand, he adjusts his feet so quickly that he's in a position to hit you right after he jumps backward. Right? So the kind of style who would give a Ryan Garcia a hard time is a guy who's comfortable coming forward on his front foot. Garcia stands a little bit too tall for my taste, right? A guy who can come forward, walk down Ryan Garcia, get him on his back foot and continue to walk into him. A guy with foot speed to close the gap between himself and Ryan Garcia. Style-wise, I'm thinking Manny Pacquiao. Right? A shorter guy who's hard to find. In other words, Pacquiao moves his head. I know Pacquiao doesn't fight at 135, but it's a style I'm interested in. Right? A Lomachenko. A guy who can come inside without being hit. Who's fast enough to be able to track you down. Who can have you with your back up against the ropes. Right? That kind of fighter would give Ryan Garcia a hard time. Right? The fighter would have to be agile enough with the upper body to avoid Garcia's shots because Garcia is two handed. Right? Hand speed with power and accuracy. So the guy would have to come inside, right? Dodge Garcia's shots, back Garcia up force Garcia to defend his body. So I believe that 
Lomachenko would beat Ryan Garcia. And keep in mind, I'm talking about an unbeaten fighter. But Luke Campbell strikes me as more of a defensive guy. He doesn't strike me as the kind of offensive guy who's going to track down Ryan Garcia against Lomachenko, and it's an excellent fight. It's an excellent fight. But Loma has, you know, Luke Campbell backing up for a lot of that fight. Loma's the one hunting Luke Campbell, a guy who is comfortable in the hunted role, like Luke Campbell is, right? He's waiting for you to make a move so he can counter you. He's blocking your shots with his hands. He has surprises for you as you collapse the pocket, right? You're collapsing the pocket, he'll lower his shoulder and dig a shot to the body. Right? That hunted style doesn't work against a Brian Garcia because Garcia is a tall guy who from distance can dole out heavy punishment and can avoid your shots. He's not close enough to you to fall for the traps you've set for guys who collapse the pocket. Right? Garcia, long arms, hits you with power shots from distance. He's not right in front of you. Those traps that you set up in the pocket don't work. The other problem is a guy with hand speed who you can't close the distance on is winning the slow rounds. So judges see flashes of hand speed and see you covering up on the end of them. Unless you're landing clean shots, you're not going to win the rounds. I think Luke Campbell's style is too passive to beat Ryan Garcia. Right? I, I think Ryan Garcia would have problems with a Gervonta Davis. Right? Some guy who's a little bit more active. Revisit the Gervonta Davis Jose Pedraza fight, where Davis is on his front foot tracking down Pizzazza, uh, P Pedraza, right? A guy who lets the judges know, I own the pocket. I'm the hunter in this fight. A guy who hunts Brian Garcia down, who's hard to find. I'm not saying Gervonta Davis is hard to find, but understand, sometimes... A fighter who's easy to find has an optical illusion going where Ryan Garcia might think, okay, well, I can hit Gervonta Davis's head. And Davis could come in thinking, okay, as he goes for my head, I'll have him in punch range. Right? I think you need a hunter guy against Ryan Garcia. Right? A guy like, ironically, Jose Ramirez, the unified champ at 140, one floor up. I think you need that kind of guy. Not a defensive-oriented, counter-punching Luke Campbell. Right? Let me say this, too. Luke Campbell's tall. Ryan Garcia's tall. Luke Campbell has a good jab. It works against shorter fighters. It keeps them outside. But you're dealing with a guy who is tall in his opponent, right? Ryan Garcia, who has quick legs. Right? Again, just ignore the knockouts that Garcia gets. Look at the hand speed. Look at how fast he can just jump back. Right? When you see quick legs like Ryan Garcia, he's not going to get hit with the jab, folks. Not only that, throwing any punch against Ryan Garcia, a guy with quick hand speed like this, is perilous. Because if you miss the punch and you're extended, Garcia might be able to come in, counter you with a quick-handed power combination. 
right? So at the end of the day, it's about talent. I hope Ryan Garcia figures out that he needs to be a bit more respectful and a bit more loyal to his promoter. But while I disagree with that part of his public game, Garcia in the ring is serious. I like Ryan Garcia over Luke Campbell. Understand everything has a price, though. Right? If Garcia is favored by better than two to one odds, then I'm going to put some on the underdog. In other words, this is a competitive fight. I expect Garcia to win. But he doesn't have Campbell's experience. He, he simply doesn't. I don't know how much experience you get knocking guys out in the first and second rounds. Right? He doesn't have Campbell's experience. And Campbell is savvy. There are a lot of questions about Ryan Garcia, just like there were a lot of questions in an earlier generation about Mike Tyson, just like there are questions now about Anthony Joshua, about what happens if it's a spirited fight, a draining fight, and Garcia has to continue to fight for all 12 rounds. Right? Those questions are out there. Right? Mike Tyson wilted against Buster Douglas. Started tiring, started getting hit with Buster Douglas's jabs. Anthony Joshua, dead on his feet, knocked down, gets off the canvas, exhausted against Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Falls apart in the middle of his first fight against. Andy Ruiz. Ryan Garcia hasn't faced adversity, hasn't been significantly tested over a very hard, grueling 12 rounds. Right here, I get the feeling because of his advantage, with his hand speed, with his power, he's a harder puncher than Luke Campbell, with his foot speed, I would say between these two guys, Ryan Garcia has the faster feet. I would expect Ryan Garcia to win four of the first six rounds and to then have that adrenaline carry him the second half of the fight. I like Ryan Garcia to win the fight. I'm going to hedge this, though, with the over. Right? He's fighting a KG vet here who's defensively minded, who's going to expect to be the hunted, right? Because of Garcia's KO record, just like Mike Tyson's KO record in an earlier generation, just like Anthony Joshua's KO record right now. Because of his KO record, I'm expecting a low over-under. I like the over in the fight. So it's Ryan Garcia to win, hedged with the over. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.